back to the Mindful Belly Don't Eat Your Feelings podcast. I'm your host, Ellie Rome, and this is episode 13, part two. So 13, part one was all about how to healthify your desserts and up-level your baked goods by making simple swaps to ingredients. So getting out the refined flour, the refined sugar, and the inflammatory oils and swapping for better options that are going to keep your gut healthy and not fuel inflammation. And also honor your weight as well. And so that you can still have the things that you love without sacrificing your health goals. Okay. So that was part one. So go listen to that if you're interested in that at all. But y'all, I forgot to talk about eggs. So that's why I wanted to do this part two episode because eggs are a staple in most baked goods. And there's a lot of confusion around eggs. You know, there's so many labels. What do I buy? Cage free, free range. So we're going to talk through that today. And then also I want to give you egg substitutes for those of you who may be intolerant to eggs, have an egg sensitivity or allergy, or for a vegan option. Okay, so there's a ton of those, so that I'll, I'll get into that. And I do want to say, you may be like, well, Ellie, how do I know if I have an egg sensitivity? Okay, so this is where an elimination experiment can be really, really powerful. So if you're experiencing symptoms, if you're having headaches, gut issues, maybe you have a chronic autoimmune issue, then it's important to, to figure out that there may be some foods driving that. And it may not be eggs. It could be though, if you're eating them regularly, it may be something to try. So if you're eating them every day, maybe you go like two weeks without them and see if any symptoms go away. When, um, and then maybe the symptoms come back in when you reintroduce. But if you're still eating a ton of processed food, gluten, dairy, then I would start with those, do an elimination experiment with those first, see if your symptoms go away. And then if they don't, maybe eggs is the next thing to try. So it's definitely dependent on you. But if you feel any sensitivity, like I know a lot of people that they'll eat eggs, they get headaches or bloatedness or they nauseous. And so some, and sometimes it's the way the eggs are prepared. Sometimes it can be if the egg is from a farm or from a factory, basically. And so, cause it makes a difference if they're eating GMO feed, it just, I'm going to talk about that. So this is a chance to tune into yourself. If you need help with that, reach out. But there's also food sensitivity testing that you could do, which they do. They have stool tests. You can do um, blood tests, blood work as well. But a lot of times if you're eating a ton of inflammatory foods or a ton of gluten and dairy that may be causing some leaky gut or antibiotics or something else that's fueling um, some gut inflammation, then you may react to eggs because of that. So sometimes the food sensitivity tests are a little hard to determine if they're actually valid. So I think the best way is through trial and error, an, a self-elimination experiment. And I would, I would recommend going at least 21 days. But yeah, if you need help, we'll talk, we can talk. So moving into all about a classification. So if you go to the store and you see cage free or you see free range or you see pasture rays, like what is the best to buy? So I'll start with what is the best to buy just to get that out there. Okay. So what you want to look for is pasture raised organic eggs that have the certified humane seal or the um, certified humane seal or the animal welfare approved label. And I'm going to get into why all this. So not only are you, when you're buying a pasture raised grass or certified humane organic egg, are you supporting these farms that are humanely raising these animals? But it's also that these eggs have so much more nutrients and so much more anti-inflammatory omega-3 fats, which, so they've shown studies in studies that the, that the omega-3 fatty acids are almost twice as much as that of regular eggs. So, and this is important because non-pastured animals that are fed a diet of corn and soy, they have a high omega-6 fatty acid ratio, which is pro-inflammatory for them. And then also for us when we consume them versus the pasture raised ones, which are rich with omega-3s that are anti-inflammatory, that helps reduce heart attacks. That's great for your brain your cell membranes are made up of these fatty acids. So we want to be fueling ourselves with the best ones. And it's not that omega-6 fatty acids are bad. I'm not demonizing them, but 
in the standard American diet, we are consuming so much more omega-6 fatty acids. We really, the ratio is completely off. We need to shift it back, get more omega-3s. So you're getting, they've shown the studies, as I mentioned, that they contain twice the amount of omega-3 fatty acids. So it's really important that you find those pasture-raised eggs. And the reason is because these animals are eating grass and worms and bugs that are filled with these omega-3s. And then we get them by eating them. And when they're fed the diet of the hot pesticide covered corn and soy, that promotes inflammation in them. And then we get that. Okay. So another thing real quick, if they're not, you know, I used to work at, as a chemical engineer at a plant and we were the, we were doing some contract work and there was a neighboring plant that was making the chicken feed and y'all it smelled so foul and I like, it just fueled my motivation to, you know, pay the extra money to eat like when it's possible to eat chickens that are raised eating what they're supposed to be eating, not the toxic chemical concoction that these companies make. So just wanted to note that. So that's why it's important to look for that on the label. And I do want to touch on, so why not cage free or free range? And I do want to say these are definitely, a, they're a level up from just something with like basic factory farm eggs, but they're not as, you know, they sound really great, but they're really not that much different. And so I've got a really great graphic that I'm going to link in the show notes that I invite you to click on and open because it explains it way better than I probably can verbally. But cage free basically means they have like one square foot of space. They're not required to have outdoor access. So they may not have a cage, but they may be like so squished together in this like pen and they're indoors, they're fed the, the GMO feed. And so by no means is this chicken roaming on the, the land, what it may sound like. And then same with free range. So these, both of these terms are the FDA approved terms. And so the free range isn't that much better than the cage free. It's, they have minimum or they're, they have access to the outdoors, but it doesn't mean they get outdoors. So it could be this tightly closed pin that has a door on it that the farmer may or may not be letting the, ch the chickens out. And so, and this has no, it doesn't say anything about what they're being fed. And then pasture raised alone isn't regulated. That, that term isn't regulated. So you want to make sure to check for that certified humane or that animal welfare approved label or that it's from a local farm that you know those chickens were roaming in the grass. And um, the, the reason to look for the organic is because that's gonna tell you kind of what it's been eating. So you wanna know that it's been eating grass and the worms and the bugs, that's to get the pasture raised, but also that, the, you know, that you're not getting sprayed with pesticides or GMO products. And organic doesn't, but organic alone doesn't mean it could be organic vegetarian, like grains and stuff that really the chicken's not meant to eat. So you kind of want that combo of both pasture raised and organic with those certifications. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Check out the graphic. It's really eye opening to, to realize. And I just want to share that because I didn't know that. And I was buying, you know, cage free. I didn't, I didn't think, I thought that sounded good. And so it was eye-opening to discover like what that actually means. So it is definitely worth it because these, not only are they filled with omega-3 fats, but they also have significant amounts more of vital nutrients. So pasture-raised eggs have shown to be contained twice as much vitamin E and up to almost 40% more vitamin A than their caged friends. So it is, and they also, they're getting sunlight. And so they have, they've shown that they've, the eggs have more vitamin D. And so it's just, you're, you're getting so much more out of a pasture-raised organic egg. So I can't emphasize that enough. So if you're going to use eggs, if you tolerate them well, then, then look for that. But also next point, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. So if you see, you know, it doesn't have the label on it, or it just says organic and it doesn't say pasture-raised, like do the best you can with what you've got. And if you have to buy a cage free egg, like that's totally fine. It's just the more, you know, so that if you do have the option that you can look for that and that you can clear up the confusion of what is what. Okay. 
So next, I want to move into the egg substitutes. So if you are someone that is following an autoimmune paleo protocol that's called AIP, and or you're vegan, or you're just trying an elimination experiment and wanting to wean off egg, or try out no eggs, well then here are some awesome egg replacements. So there's a really great graphic for this as well. I'm going to link in the show notes that I found on paleohacks.com and it's amazing. It's so good. And so it tells you exactly how much to, of the ingredient to add that would substitute for one egg and then what its uses are. So if it's like for binding, moisture, texture, and then what recipes are best for it. So I'm not going to read all, I'm not going to go through every single thing of that, but I want to mention what these substitutes are and a little bit about them. Okay. So First one that you may have heard a lot of are flaxseed eggs. So this is a great vegan option. And you basically put one tablespoon of ground flaxseed meal in a quarter cup of water. And it's an awesome egg substitute for most baked goods. And that is a great source of healthy fat and fiber and protein. So it's an awesome add to your, to your baked goods for sure. And also chia seeds, kind of same thing. And what the only caveat with chia seeds and flax seeds, or if you're on AIP, if you're on an autoimmune protocol, or you don't tolerate nuts well, or you're trying to reduce the lectin load in your life, well, then you may not want to be using seeds. And so my next favorite option, actually, this is probably my favorite option, is grass-fed gelatin. And so grass-fed gelatin is, can be so supportive of your gut health, your digestive system. It's really good for your skin and your hair and your nails. And this is it's pretty much flavorless. You don't taste it. I've baked with it a lot. And I, and you, yeah, you make an egg out of it. It's from a grass fed cow. So you want to buy a good source gelatin. So not just like the random gelatin you see at Walmart, but my favorite brands are new naturals and vital proteins. So check those out. I can link those in the show notes as well. And you can get those on Amazon or through their websites and they sell vital proteins at, and new naturals at pretty much a lot of health food stores. So look for that. And the only thing with this one is that if a recipe calls for a lot of eggs, so if it's like six to eight eggs, I don't think I'd use grass fed gelatin because it can kind of at that point when you're using so much, it can kind of become like your baked goods kind of get squishy, almost like chewy, like the jello, like jello ish. So I would use them when the recipe for like cookies and stuff calls for two or three eggs then you're good to go i've made i've used that before but i did make the mistake of making a chocolate cake which called for like eight eggs and it was just super gooey so it still tasted like chocolate so i was fine with it but um not the best so that's another option so we've got the chia seeds flax seeds grass fed gelatin and then some other options that would be great if your aip would be using unsweetened applesauce or you can use apple pectin, which is the apple fiber, and it's, you can make eggs out of that or make like faux eggs out of that for baking. But unsweetened applesauce is great. And then also banana. So mashed ripe banana has, is a really good binder. The only thing with bananas is that you it may taste a little banana-y. So this is great for sweet baked goods or like banana bread. And the only thing with those two, so with the grass-fed gelatin and the flax seeds and chia seeds, you're getting good protein. Grass-fed gel gelatin is an awesome source of protein, which I love adding protein to my baked goods because it makes them more satiating and helps to balance blood sugar a little bit more, where if you're adding bananas or unsweetened applesauce, they're pretty much just carbs. So that's just if you're, depending on your goals, just to be mindful of that, that it's additional carbs. Okay. And for balanced blood sugar. So what you could do for this is add in collagen protein, which I love doing in my baked goods. So it's I just it's not like gelatin where it's going to get like congealy. I don't think that's a word, but it's not gonna like get jelly. It will. Um, I never notice. I put mold, like four scoops at times in my recipes and just add a little bit of extra water, coconut oil, and it gives your your baked goods a protein burst. It's great for your skin. And again, it can be really great for your gut, your nails, your hair. Again, focusing on getting collagen that's not just off the shelf, but really like a good source collagen. So grass fed from a pasture raised cow, Vital Proteins is awesome. They have a great uh, collagen and it's flavorless. You won't taste it. So if you're using banana, you could just throw in collagen and then you get, you get the 
binder benefits of the banana and the protein boost of the collagen. Okay, and then the last one is almond butter or any nut butter. So that is great for binding to add moisture, to add texture, and great healthy fats, fiber, and protein. The only thing with this one is if you are AIP and you're not doing nuts or if you have a nut allergy or anything like that. So, but if not, I, almond butter is a great option because it is also really filling because it's so, it's got that good healthy fat. And so it can be really satiating to make baked goods with that, that you really feel like satiated and full. So these are my paleo egg substitutions for you. So we've got real quick recap. So flax seeds, chia seeds, grass-fed gelatin, unsweetened applesauce, a ripe banana, or almond butter or another nut butter, depending on what you are needing based on your goals and what your body's calling for. So if you have any questions about that, reach out. If you use any of these, please let me know how they turn out. And I, yeah, I would love to hear from you. And if you've got any more questions around like what eggs to buy, I'll recap that. So get the pasture raised, organic, certified humane animal welfare, certified eggs, and you'll be good to go. So uh, if you need any help with an elimination experiment, I'm here for you. If you're suffering from autoimmune conditions or sugar addiction, I am here for you. So reach out, DM me on Instagram at mindfulbelly or email me at mindfulbelly at gmail.com. And I can't wait to talk to y'all at the next episode. All right. Bye.